Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. I want to take a closer look at my favorite semiconductor company, NVIDIA. There have been a few updates. First, we are hearing some reports about their next generation data center GPU. We're also hearing a little bit of talks from TSMC. And I just want to take a closer look at NVIDIA and more of their data center market in forms of valuations at current levels. So let's take a closer look in today's episode. So right now we can see in stock price, NVIDIA is sitting at $422. Right now, year to date, the stock is up a whopping 194.8%. In the past month, it definitely has been kind of one of the worst months for NVIDIA. I believe in the overall year, we can see the stock is down roughly 10% in the past year. And from its peak in August, the stock is down even closer to like 14.5%. So personally, NVIDIA is my number one position in my portfolio, but it's one that I haven't personally added. One of my biggest fears um, is the current valuation. We are going to take a closer look at valuation in a bit. Um, but what I really want to do is take a closer look at some updates. The first thing is yesterday we did see some reports where maybe there might be some Wall Street um, bursting says investors should take profits in pricey tech stocks such as NVIDIA and others. Finally, I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. I, I mean, to each their own, right? There's a, a lot of investors that, hey, look, with the current valuation, they don't mind selling it at current prices and maybe expect a better buying opportunity. I do believe in the semiconductor market, you always get opportunities to some extent. You just can never time it perfectly uh, because the semiconductor market is such a cyclical space in everything, even from data centers, from the consumer market. One of my biggest fears right now for NVIDIA is just that, hey, right now, uh, a lot of these cloud server providers are kind of over ordering to some extent. And then fast forward a year from now, um, kind of that order is gonna, they're going to slow down because they maybe did too much purchasing at the beginning and they have to wait things out. On the bright side about that, though, is the great thing with a lot of these advanced semiconductor companies that design chips for data centers, it is kind of a cycle, right? So they do release a next generation for NVIDIA. It seems to be every two years. So even if the demand dies down for the H100, the demand will pick up for the next generation once it comes out. Uh, so to me, that's more of a short-term fear, uh, but definitely something that can move the overall stock. Personally, I'm not planning on selling any of my shares anytime time soon but I'm also not planning on buying anytime soon. Uh, so what I really want to take a closer look at today is NVIDIA. Um, they did mention, there are reports that NVIDIA Blackwell, Blackwell is the next generation for NVIDIA's architecture right now. It's the Hopper architecture, right? So the next one is going to be the Blackwell. Um, and they do mention like the H100, it will be the B100, the B100 GPU to hit the market with the three nanometer tech in 2024. Uh, and there are reports that TS SMC is going to be this big player that's going to continue uh, to be the manufacturer of NVIDIA's data center GPUs. There were some talks and maybe some reports or rumors or, many, or maybe some investors were speculating that maybe NVIDIA might go to Samsung uh, to kind of get their, their next generation GPUs. Um, but it seems like right now, based on these reports, NVIDIA is pretty happy with TSMC and we are going to see them kind of push off into the three nanometer within the... Um, within probably the quarter four or the second half of 2024. And that normally goes with in line with what NVIDIA goes about. We know that NVIDIA, the most popular is the H100. The H100 came out in the third quarter of 2022. So it hasn't even been a full year since the H100 is out. So H100 came out in the third quarter of 2022. The previous generation was the Ampere line, the A100, and the A100 um, started full production and shipping in May of 2020, so the second quarter of 2020. So we can see this kind of uh, two-year time span. So 2020 was uh, the A100, 2022 was the H100, and it only makes sense that, hey, the next generation, the B100, will come out in 2024. Uh, obviously, this huge push in the data center market, thanks to AI, the AI race uh, has really kind of 
pushed NVIDIA to new levels, as we see in the stock price. Um, but just for those that are not familiar, I mean, we can see its data center market, how it has propelled dramatically. Um, we can see roughly $10 billion in quarter two of fiscal year of 2024, compared to $4 billion the last quarter. And in almost, almost, this company made enough revenue in this quarter than it did um, in, in three years. Actually, in the first half in the first two quarters of 2024, fiscal year of 2024, NVIDIA made more revenue in data center uh, than the past year itself. So we can see definitely the huge growth that the company is seeing in the data center market. And this is going to continue, right? Quarter three is expected to be even a bigger blowout for the data center market in quarter four as well. Uh, so like I mentioned, one of my biggest fears for NVIDIA is kind of this huge, huge backlog of orders maybe get canceled or the demand dies off i mean here we we're taking a closer look at revenue estimates and this chart represents revenue estimates by by obviously analysts and we can see just a year ago um and um these kind of projections were pretty fair um but just in a matter of just a year to date how these kind of estimates have Jumped dramatically. I mean, we can see in March of 2023, it seems like analysts were expecting revenue to be somewhere of around $30 billion. But because of the huge demand of H100, we can see that now analysts expect somewhere around $53 billion. Um, that's almost a almost almost 100% growth in what they were previously estimating about six months ago um and sometimes one of my fears like i mentioned is hey look the demand can come as fast can leave as fast as it came um even though obviously ai has a lot and a lot of future to it in the long term sometimes the short term might not be as good as many predict uh, so luckily for me, NVIDIA is one of my long-term holdings. It's not a trade. I don't care what happens to it within the next year. If it does kind of see a correction, I would gladly buy. In the long term, I still believe NVIDIA can be bigger than a trillion dollar where it's at right now. So before we go any further, I do want to take a closer look at some other updates. I want to say thank you guys for the support. We just hit 28.1 thousand subs. If you guys haven't, make sure to hit the thumbs up. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. I do have exclusive videos for the semiconductor market. I do kind of deep dives on companies. Click join to learn more. I have a master's degree in electrical engineering, and I pretty much research the semiconductor market on a daily basis. For a special offer, check out fool.com slash jose. For free newsletter, josenaharo.substack com for free semiconductor news semiconductorwatch.com now i, I want to continue here with nvidia and obviously one of their big players tsmc so tsmc um, is the company that manufactures these chips we can see right now the stock is sitting at 84 dollars $84. Year to date, the stock is up barely 14%. In my opinion, I didn't like TSMC earlier when it was sitting at those 100 levels. I kind of stopped and, and, and kind of put a pause on it. But now sitting at these $84 levels, I think TSMC it's looking pretty attractive, in my opinion, in forms of valuation. Let me know your thoughts, guys. What do you guys think of TSMC right now? But what I really want to focus on TSMC is there are reports that TSMC is ramping up their COWAS advanced packaging production to meet the soaring AI chip demand. Uh, so this is probably, for those that are not familiar, COWAS or chip on wafer on substrate advanced packaging is a, uh, a process used to kind of create a lot of advanced semiconductor solutions. Those chips, for example, are the H100 that NVIDIA is selling like crazy. And the bottleneck is this advanced packaging. So TSMC is actually increasing their capacity. And this is something that we have heard over time. Um, but it does seem like they're, they're moving at it a lot faster. Um, it's indicated that right now, NVIDIA is currently TSMC's largest COWAS advanced packaging customer, accounting for 60% of its production capacity due to the search and demand company. Uh, due to the search and demand, right? Companies like AMT, Amazon, and Broadcom are also placing orders for this COWAS capacity. Uh, so I think it's pretty insane. Um, it also seems pretty interesting that NVIDIA next year is already coming out with their three nanometer B100, where the competitors are AMD. AMD still hasn't released a competitor to the H100. It's expected to come out in the second half of this year, and that will be the MI300. Pretty interesting, the MI300 will come out a year after the H100, or in a year before the B100, 
1500 and it will be in TSMC's 5 nanometer line. So we can see how Nvidia is a lot a high, high, um kind of higher ahead in form of innovation right now. Then there is Gaudi 2. Gaudi 2 is Intel's accelerator and that is running on 7 nanometer processor and the next generation which is expected next year is Gaudi 3 which will be running in 5 nanometer. So obviously nanometers and nodes don't really kind of dictate to some extent performance um, but it kind of just showcases the innovation that Nvidia is ahead of its competitors. Before I close out, I just want to take a closer look at forward P/E ratios for Intel, AMD, and Nvidia. Um, we can see forward P/E ratio. Intel is the most expensive. AMD is the cheapest. I personally do enjoy AMD at these price points. Um, I'll probably be doing a video later on on why AMD is my favorite semiconductor at the moment. Um, but we can see in in forward one year, so this is next fiscal year, Intel becomes the cheapest, and AMD and Nvidia are kind of trading at very similar levels in forward PE ratio one year. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care, have a good day, and see you next time.